Hey guys, how's it going? It's Janie over here at Janie Sweets, and in this episode I'm coming at you with a tutorial on how I made this 3D clown head perfect for Halloween. I had made this cake last year, but for some reason YouTube was messing up with the URL, so I'm bringing it back because I absolutely loved it. So if you want to learn how I made this cake, keep on watching. To begin with, I am starting out with a cake that I've baked in the shape of a skull. I used a regular vanilla cake recipe and I've just added some red food coloring as opposed to just using um, red velvet because red velvet doesn't have any butter and you want a cake that has a high butter content inside of it so that it can get nice and firm in the fridge and you can manipulate it for long periods of time. Um, so I just used that and I've got some, some regular white chocolate ganache that I've dyed red and I um, covered it completely. I give a little bit more instructions on how to get to this step. If you check out my last DIY um, day of the dead cake, that was my last Halloween tutorial, I go in depth and step by step on how to get to this step so definitely check it out i will link it for you guys in the description box below so right here um i am just using pieces of fondant to accentuate um parts of um his face because he has um some pretty high cheekbones and a more pronounced bottom lip so i wanted to make sure i bulked him up before i covered him in fondant so i'm just using regular white fondant i'm gonna roll it out um pretty thin and then i'm just going to use um that fondant and cover his face completely So just use your hands, um, the palm of your hands, and smooth it out as best as you can. And it doesn't really have to be smooth because he does have wrinkles all over his face. So if it's not 100% wrinkle free, don't really stress out over it. It's going to be fine. Just use a pizza cutter to cut out all the excess and then make two little holes in the eye so that you can press it with your fingers and this is where the magic happens this is where all the um indentations that you um put are going to show up so just use your fingers and press on it give him more of a frown um use your thumb and your uh, index finger to do most of the work and this is why I tell you it's important to use um, a butter uh, based cake because it'll be a lot easier and it'll withstand all this abuse <laughs> that you're putting it through so using a ball tool I'm going to shape his nose and then using my thumb again I'm going to just continue shaping his face so you can use your fingers, you can use different tools, um, whatever you need to use to make him how you want him to look. And I continuously kept referencing a picture of Pennywise uh, just so that I could um, get his features kind of exact. Now to make the ears, there's really nothing to it. Ears aren't really perfect so all you have to do is just make sure that you have two pieces of fondant that are the same size roughly and using a ball tool you're just going to create like kind of like a a C shape inside. It's hard to explain it's really easier for you to just look at what I'm doing. I'm just creating a C shape inside the piece of fondant. So I'm doing that to two ears and then I'm just going to glue it um, to his face using just some regular water or you could also use gum glue. Now the best way that I found to make his hair is I used some of my ganache mixed up with um, some Rice Krispie treats and I've just crumbled it, crumbled it <laughs> all together and I'm just going to use that to attach to his head. Um, with a little skewer I'm just going to push onto um, the cake and then create the front or the left side of his hair and then put a little bit on the top and that's going to create the front. 
and then do the same to the opposite side. And I'm just going to use my hands to mold it however I want it to look. Because he, when you look at him, have, has two um, sides of his hair and then a little bit in the front. So I'm just using the rest of the Rice Krispies to add to the back of his head. And then once he's done, I'm going to cover it in saran wrap and put it in the fridge for about 30 minutes. Once that comes out, I can go ahead and cover it up with some uh, fondant. I've just dyed this fondant orange, uh, brown, and a little bit of Wilton ivory. And all those are Wilton food coloring until I got a color that I was okay with. And then I'm just going to form it all over his head and then use a pizza wheel to cut off the excess. Once I take it out, I'm using an X-Acto knife to give him the shape. Um, he has a really messed up hairline. <laughs> um, and then just a clay tool or a fondant tool um, to just roughen it up and create the appearance of hair. Now the fun part begins. This is where you get to um, bring him to life. So I am just using some um food coloring in an airbrush machine and i'm going to airbrush him with a little bit of black um all around his eyes inside of his mouth and a little bit around his hairline now this looks like i did it super fast but in actuality this took me a really long time because i'm going very slow with the airbrush machine on low just so that I don't put too much um, color all at once. Um, oh, and I forgot to put some teeth, so I'm just using some like ivory, um, ivory, what is this? Fondant. <laughs> and I'm just forming some teeth. They don't have to be perfect. And I have some uh, white fondant, and I am putting his eyes there, and I'm going to use brown mixed with black and make his features a little bit more pronounced. I've used that same brown to make the eyeballs um, or the iris. I don't know how you call that little brown part in the middle of your eyes. Um, then I switched to red which I still mix with a little tiny bit of brown so that it's not super red like bright red and I'm using that to um, spray his nose and his lips. Now guys I'm going super super slow making sure that I don't overspray and my airbrush machine is on low. You definitely want to make sure that you bring all the colors all over his face. So don't just stick to brown. Just make sure you add some white, I'm sorry, some black, some red all over so that it really um, looks more uniform. So take your time with this. This took me about a good 45 minutes <laughs> um, before I was able to get to this step. Now to create that little um, funny smile line that he has, I just took the red airbrush and just airbrushed it up. And I like the way that the board looked, so I just kind of put blood <laughs> splatters all over it. And then I'm using a little bit of white fondant rolled out super thin and I'm going to create that little collar that clowns are known for. And then I'm using my X-Acto knife to give him a bullet hole in his skull because like I said I wanted to zombify this clown. And then using just straight up red gel food coloring, I am going to drip some blood down his mouth and off of the hole. And I'm just going to create little splatters all over. 
So this is it. This was me cutting into it. I literally had to cut it as soon as I was done because I could not stare at it. It literally was freaking me out. So this is it, you guys. This is how I made my version of a Pennywise, not really, zombie cake. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Um, definitely check out my last video if you click on this annotation to your left. Check me out. I am on Facebook as well as Instagram. All my socials are at Janie Sweets. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so because lots more videos are coming your way. So that's it you guys. I love you. Talk to you next time.